got a new air conditioner. I'm so freaking excited. We didn't have an air conditioner on Adrenaline. We had one on our old trawler that we had before Adrenaline, Neverland. We had a marine AC and that was really nice. We didn't use it very often, but when it was super hot, it was really nice to have. As you can see, this camper came with an AC, but it's broken and I did a ton of research. I called like five places around here and they all said they don't recharge the systems. I did all my checks with the electronic components of the AC. Everything seemed good. The compressor, the other electronic piece, and then all the controls controls underneath it was voltage where it was supposed to be the compressor turns on and stays on that was all good it's definitely just out of refrigerant and these are sealed systems this one actually does have a valve on it that was added in the past but no place will recharge them around here because it's just a problem in the future if it's leaking it's leaking and it's just gonna leak out again it's not worth like trying to track down the leak and resealing and that's the conclusion that i've gotten to from my research so we just went on amazon we bought a new one and uh yeah we're just gonna pop this one out pop this one back in and this is just the top unit the bottom part of the unit can stay where it is. Here we go. That's what we're doing. Before we do that, I'm going to go underneath and I think we just unscrew it from underneath. I think there's like four bolts that's holding this on and we'll, yeah, that's what we'll do. There she is, the top unit there. It's nice and white in here. Super bright. Whew. All right. Hope you guys don't get the wrong idea about us with air conditioner. We're pretty rustic. We can live very simply. I mean, we've lived on adrenaline for three years without air conditioner. A lot of that time is in the hot Bahamas and the Caribbean. And honestly, if this camper didn't come with AC, we would probably just install a nice big vent exhaust fan and that would be fine. But since it did, it's all, all the wiring's there and all we had to do was get a new top unit to get it going again and simple plug. We're just gonna do it because we want this camper to be a place where we could come and take a break from boat life. And boat life can be really, really hard. Um, a lot of times it's not. It's, you know, nice, easy hanging out on nice, pretty beaches and the sunshine. But the sunshine and the heat, they add up over, I mean, just living out there. It's hard. It gets hard at times. So we want this to be like a nice, comfortable, relaxing break from boat life. And the more comfortable we can make it, I mean, look, we're still living in a truck camper. It's not like a big RV or anything. Um, and the more, But the more comfortable we can make this truck camper, the better. It'll just make it easier to do something different and to be comfortable in our truck camper, but then get out there and go exploring still with it. Hopefully this comes off. Yeah. Do the plug. Just one single plug, that's awesome. <laughs> hey buddy. A little tree frog. Alright, I'm just going to clean this up so we get a really nice good seal and then we'll be good to pop the new one on. Just started raining outside. I got all, all four of those big long through bolts back in. So the whole unit's mounted. It pulled down the gasket on the roof nice and tight. It's a good thing it just started raining because it's a good test. I can make sure that there's no leaks or anything, which there's not. It'd be really easy to feel it right around the rim of the gasket. So that's all good. I still didn't put the cover on. I just wanted to test it and make sure that it's working well. And I got a little nervous because turn it on, that's the fan. And the fan was working great, but then once I turned it, <laughs> once I turned it to the AC, it kept blowing the circuit breaker that we're plugged into Sierra's parents' house right now, and it kept blowing that breaker. And I just looked up online, and apparently, I guess household breakers a lot of times are only 15 amps, and it's really easy to blow those breakers if uh, there's like anything else plugged in. There was something else plugged in, and then we had like the the battery charger on in here as well. So I turned all that other stuff off. And now we can turn it on and pretty much immediately it's blowing pretty cold air, which is surprising. I thought that it would take a while to really cool down, but 
nice and cold air, and <laughs> it feels so good. It's so crazy, man, AC. Duh. <laughs> we were hoping to get enough lithium battery power to be able to run this AC for a little bit, and, and solar to charge the batteries, and then be able to run this AC for um, a little bit, but it doesn't look like that's really going to be practical. Mostly just because of the space we're limited to in storing our lithium batteries. Which is fine, we'll just run this AC if we're ever at a campground plugged in. That's usually where it's the hottest and muggiest anyway. Um, and if we're out in the woods or somewhere else, hopefully we have a nice shaded tree we're under. And we have our vent fans and stuff anyway. And who knows, maybe we'll even get another generator to run this if we have to. And everything else. AC is done, on to the next project. Got some new batteries. So we're redoing our whole electrical system, uh, the main part of our electrical system here in the camper, and we're replacing just this one single lead acid battery with two Dakota Lithium 100 amp hour batteries. I am so sold on lithium batteries. We had them on adrenaline, and now one of the highest priorities is to switch out this lead acid battery with the lithium batteries. There's just so many advantages to them with only one disadvantage, and basically that's just the cost. They're pretty expensive. However, if you divide it out over the long run, and you take into consideration the amount of power you actually get out of the batteries over and over and over again over the long run, it's actually cheaper than lead acid and or AGM gel uh, batteries. So, in my mind, it's a no-brainer, especially in applications where weight is important so this thing weighs 32 pounds and our lead acid battery right here weighs something like 50 pounds 50 60 pounds so just much much lighter and just way more usable amp hours for the size not only the weight but also the size of the space that it takes up so we're gonna have 200 amp hours as our house bank in this truck camper I think that's gonna be a good amount and we're actually gonna put some solar on here so we're really excited to do that but that's not gonna be for a little bit because we weren't able to get the panels in quick enough before we leave but we're gonna meet them in New York and when we get to New York we'll install some solar we'll install some more, some more lights and we'll just kind of go round two on this camper for now I'm just kind of mapping out what our electrical system is gonna be like and just trying to neaten everything up and then we're gonna install these lithiums so we'll test them out and see how they work So you don't have to worry about, with lithium batteries, there's not, no liquid in them, so you don't have to worry about the orientation. You can even mount them basically upside down if you wanted to. You can mount them sideways, whatever you want to do, because there's no liquid in them. So it doesn't really matter that I have this thing tilted all the way up as I'm trying to fit it into this little space. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Perfect. We have our two 100 amp hour Dakota lithium batteries wired in parallel to give us 12 volts and a total of 200 amp hours, which is gonna be amazing. Probably just as light as that old car battery that we had in here, the old lead acid battery. Um, I still have to clean up some wires and stuff. I added some bus bars cause all the wiring in here was like household wiring with those little like screw on connectors. So I added some nice bus bars if you take the covers off these and these tubes aren't here, it's all nice and neat in there. We have the shunt there, water pump. These are the two solar controllers that aren't hooked up yet because we don't have solar panels yet. This is gonna be the DC to DC charger so that we can take the 12 volt when we hook into the truck to the DC to DC charger and that'll monitor the charging to Dakota lithium batteries. We have our inverter, 1500 watt inverter, and we have our battery monitor system. So this looks like everything's working. It's saying it's probably not synchronized or anything yet, but anyway, it looks like things are hooked up properly. I went over everything a few times 
just to make sure I have all my leads in the correct places and everything's hooked up properly. Obviously, like I said, I got to still straighten up some wires and stuff like that. I'm going to try to reroute some, some of these water lines so that they're not like over the batteries. Also gonna try to build some sort of battery cover. So if we do get any drips, they don't drip onto the batteries or anything like that. And I have to do a battery tie down. So these batteries don't move around at all when we're on the road. So a few things left to do, but the system's all hooked up for now. Obviously we're in like limited space, so I'm gonna do what I can. Obviously water in the electrical compartment is not the best scenario, but that's kind of what we have and there's not really a great alternative to where to put this stuff. So I'm just gonna try to reroute it the best I can and then cover the batteries the best I can so they don't get wet. Um, that would be a disaster. So oh, Sierra's gonna be pissed at me. I got this dirty. Shoot, I gotta clean that before she gets back. Anyway, we're all hooked up. Here's the battery switch in here. If I turn this switch, it turns the batteries on, connects them to the bus bar everything we have the lights and radio on so everything should light up so here's the moment of truth hopefully we don't see any sparks or smoke oh yeah there we go sparks smoke lights are on radios on we're all hooked up. All right. I'm excited. Hello, everybody. We hope you are enjoying this truck camper renovation so far. Next video, we're going to be doing the whole exterior. So I think you guys are going to love to see what we did with the outside. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. And if you're really confused right now and are like, why are billions here in a truck camper? Go back a few videos and you will see that we are doing this in the meantime while we await our brand new Sea Wind Catamaran. So we can't wait to get that. But it's got to be built first. So in the meantime, we are rebuilding the truck camper, traveling around the country, and towing some other awesome, awesome boats. We actually have one right behind here right now. You'll see. Stay tuned to see what it is. And we can't wait to bring you on the adventure for not only the truck camper, but the brand new boat. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.